My name is Narayan, Narayana Puspati. I was a researcher. Uh, my work was on groundwater. But all along, I used to be fairly concerned, rather not fairly, pretty deeply concerned for the fact that what our earlier presentations were talking about, environment, social justice, and economic gains. You know, the environmental social uh, issues and economic priorities, they seem to be at long ends. I believe, I always believed, I still believe, and all my innovations are working in that direction, and that is, these three need not get into a conflicting mode, they can actually work synergistically and sustainably. That's what made me get into, get away from research and get into an entrepreneur shirt, or rather the hat, whatever you want to call it. My concern was, firstly, of course, if you heard me, plastic, ah. Well, plastic is something everybody is terribly bugged with and uh, it is it is all pervading us. Everywhere you have plastic, everywhere you have plastic, plastic, plastic and what, what the hell is this plastic? And you just don't know what to do. You've got no alternatives. But is really plastic that bad? Isn't plastic the best that can have happen in this world? When you ask why plastic is bad, everyone says, Plastic is bad because it does not biodegrade. This is metal. It does not biodegrade. Put it under the soil. 100 years later, it is going to remain the same. It does not biodegrade. Check out what happened with this Mahanjadaro and Harappa excavations and all those old excavations. You got those terracottas, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000 year old terracottas. They are not biodegraded. Metal is not bad. Glass is not bad. I know. Soil also is not bad. What is bad? Then, what is bad is our inability to control the abuse and misuse of plastic. Plastic per se is not bad. That is the best thing that has happened in the planet Earth. And tell, mind you, I am telling you, a man who hates plastic, I hate plastic because it should not be applied in food. If you apply it in food, what happens is plastic has got a whole lot of toxins and a lot of chemical complexes. Uh, bisphenols and phthalates and these can leach into food and these are carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. So what is this food grade plastic? I have asked for a few spoons and it is supposed to be white. It is supposed to be food grade. It is not food grade anyway. It is just colored white. But even if you really look at food grade plastic, it talks about permissible limits of uh, leaching. In the US, it is 45 parts per million. In India, it is 60 parts per million. But why the hell should it leach? Why the hell should we expose ourselves to carcinogens? Isn't it? So, is there any alternative? Yes, there is. I have been working on this, and uh, this is my first innovation. And I've got a few others, but this presentation I will talk only about this. And these are the spoons. I thought you need a spoon too. Well, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. Before you can ask me any question, this cold water, this hot water. I am going to pour some hot water in this glass. I can't stick it in a mouthful, so I am not going to eat anymore. There is a spoon, and I am going to drop it in this. And all through my presentation, you stand there. And you will notice that it will not turn soft too soon. It will survive the whole meal. And at the end of the meal, it turns a little soft for you to bite through. It is actually hard. I made chopsticks also. Why did I do all these things? The environmental objective, the social objective, obviously. From the social perspective, I see you will be surprised. As compared to census 2000, we have 9 billion farmers fewer in census 2011. That means 90 lakh farmers are lesser. Can you imagine that we are shot by 90 lakh farmers? Why did they go out of power? It is not remunerated. If you are going to allow this, this 9 million will become 90 million, 90 million will become, I don't know, and you will have nobody to produce food. We are talking about food security bill. Food security bill talks about distribution of food. But why? There is nobody to produce food. There are no farmers. So where the hell are you going to uh, distribute the food? This is a serious problem. It is not coming to the newspapers. It is not being found. The administration is turning a blind eye. Not just that. I am all the more appalled. As a fact, the groundwater levels are falling. In a district like Mahesana, 
1700 feet deep water has gone down and farmers they are using 25 horsepower pumps isn't this ridiculous isn't this madness yes obviously it is sheer madness and that got me irritated and I quit the job I thought enough is enough we don't wait for the administration administration just going not to go to do anything because farmers constitute a very strong vote bank a very sensitive vote bank there are a lot of uh, politicians who try to dabble with farming community and they lost in the, in the next election so I know nobody in the administration is going to do nobody in the government is going to do so I wanted to bring in the market forces and that is where I say marriage between these two conflicting the economic and the social and environmental objectives can come together I am creating a market force I'm going to create a market demand if I look at it uh, I talk about three countries the US Japan and India the three countries put together consume 350 billion pieces of plastic disposable cutlery and wooden chopsticks uh, bamboo based wooden uh, chopsticks if I talk about one one percent of that I'm looking at 3 billion pieces and to produce this 3 billion pieces I will be requiring my raw material and the raw material I'm sorry I forgot to tell you the raw material I use is sorghum jowar it requires something like about 15,000 hectares that's a huge quantity of area and when I was in my research field I was I developed one uh, groundwater estimation model and I saw but if you can reduce rice area by 10 percent and put that under any other uh, dryland crops, so I put it in the Jowar. And what was actually falling trends in groundwater stabilized, and when it made it 20 percent, started increasing. That's what kicked me. I thought, yes, I've got a solution. I can do this. Happen, make it make this happen. I can create a huge market for sorghum cultivation. What is actually happening in the field? The traditional sorghum belts have vanished. I talk about Andhra Pradesh, Mehbub Nagar, Kadim Nagar, Nalgonda. These are the districts where sorghum was traditionally cultivated and they have all vanished and in came rice. Where the hell am I uh, so, so uh, off with uh, rice? Rice consumes 60 times more water. Meaning every acre of sorghum replaced with rice, it has put the pressure 60 times more on the water resources available there. If I can reverse that, I will be able to bring back the groundwater results. Number one. Number two, do we really require that much of rice? Every year, 2 million acres of uh, rice is getting added. That is 20 lakh acres is getting added. What is happening to the rice? This rice is rotting in the uh, in the warehouses. Do we really need it? Every year I read in the newspapers, to my disappointment, 100 tons, 700 tons, 1000 tons. What is this madness? Let us say 500 tons of rice is not cultivated. What is it going to cost us? Or rather, 500 tons of rice is wasted. What is it going to cost us? At a rate of 500 liters per kg of rice, this is standard uh, you know, research output. 500 liters of water is required to produce one kilo of rice. And 500, 500 tons of rice is wasted. What is the kind of water that is being wasted? This water can take care of 100,000 people for, for the whole year at a per capita per day of 100 LPCD. LPCD is your domestic water, liters per capita per day. It can take care of 100,000 people, 1 lakh people's water. You are just wasting it. And who is benefiting? The rodents. I am sure you would be very happy to see the very healthy rodents. You have not shown your, your photograph. They are very healthy. The colonies of rodents, big, ferocious. I went into those warehouses to see. Okay, so getting back onto this. What is the cost of electricity if this much of water is not lifted? You know, the average now is 7 horsepower is the kind of average uh, motors that are being deployed. But if I take 5 horsepower, the total electricity that is being used for the 500 tons of rice that is rotting in the warehouses is 1.5 billion units. And can you imagine we are doing this at the cost of 3 days power holiday to the industry and the, and the, uh, service, in the service sector? These are the two which are contributing maximum to the GDP. Agriculture has always been poor. It's been always less than 5, 5 to 7, 7% 7 contribution to the GDP. Why the hell are we doing this? 56% of the total electricity goes to agriculture. Is it rational? It's time for us to say, stop this. Enough is enough. But we cannot say this. Democracy, more than politics. Okay, so let's do something else. That is where the marriage, the economic gains. I am doing this, not for charity. I am not an NGO. I am for private, private limited company. 
Okay, we are doing this, and we are going to take this and help so many farmers who are otherwise coming out of farming to go back to farming. What is happening to these farmers who have left farmers? They are coming into the urban areas. In the urban areas, is there space? Is there water? Is there food? Is there infrastructure, social and uh, otherwise? We are creating this imbalance largely because we are not, rather we are turning a Nelson I to the melody that needs to be handled and call spade a spade. Okay, so on the other hand, I also have made these chopsticks. Okay. Disposable chopsticks consumption in Japan. Japan is the largest consumer of disposable chopsticks. The irony is Kyoto, which lays down the well, basically a more, more or less like a Bible for your you know the environmental uh, safeguarding. Kyoto is in Japan. Japan can be the largest number of disposable chopsticks. 24 billion pairs of them. And what do they do? After use, they burn it. On one hand, forest is cut, getting cut, carbon sink. Is getting removed. On the other hand, you're burning it. Carbon emission is getting created. This does not need any burning. This will biodegrade. You put it in water, and uh, oh yeah, I forgot to ring the bell. Oh uh, yeah, it's been it's still it's still firm. It is still firm. It has been in water for so long. Okay, it won't it won't break. We have done enough tests, we have done on the designs, uh, we have uh, been able to bring in the soup spoons, the desert spoons and uh, uh, it took us quite some time to get these ribs onto the spoons so they are terribly strong. You know, we Indians have this habit of you know mixing rice with uh, curry or whatever uh, back flow and the earlier ones broke. Okay, these I have done myself, I have been the worst critic of my own product. I tried it in every possible way, they didn't break. And none of it, you know, they acquired the taste of the food, and so your meal is longer. And they are as cheap. You don't need to use plastic. Now, what? Now, the question is I only talked about one side of the plastic, and that is it has got um, some of these carcinogens. But how many of you have actually seen plastic uh, products being manufactured? I have been to several of such units. The, the paradox is you got very stringent norms for food, saf uh, food safety standards. You know, there's an act of parliament which talks about food safety and standards. It is there not just in India, they are all over the world. You got very strong you know, conditions of how to make your food. The good hygiene practices, good management practices, hazard analysis and critical control point, ISO 22000, whatever. But there are no norms. To manufacture the utensils that are used to hold food. I have not seen even a single individual till date who has washed a plastic spoon before it dips into the food. For some strange reasons, we believe plastic is as sterile as syringe. So straight away take it and put it into food and start consuming it. But if you go into the into these uh, units where the manufacturer, there is a male and a female, or the core in the cavity, and a molten uh, uh, plastic is injected. And not with, no matter how tight you make it, what a tight you make it, there will be a small flash. And there will be some two ladies sitting on the floor, they got a blade, they scrape it and grrr, and then throw it. There is a drag of a cloth with which they just wipe it and then they put it in a plastic bag and sell it. There are no branded plastic cutlery. I will not washing it before using it. What happens is, if you will touch this, if you will touch this, any one of you can do that. And if you will touch this, it's got a little bit of roughness. The roughness is because in a small particle of plastic got dislodged. It is not necessary. The chances of this dislodged particle falling out of the spoon is equal to the chance of it falling inside the spoon also. And with just a rag of a cloth, when you wipe it, it doesn't touch the base of it. And there is still some plastic. And without washing it, you are putting it in your mouth. You are ingesting microgram after microgram of plastic. Then, in India. This is true in India. I do not know what other country. Uh, a question always was there in my mind. You got so much of use and throw, and every day hundreds and thousands of uh, these spoons are being sold. You use and throw. So they should be seen on the roadside. I don't get to see. I didn't get to see even one on the roadside. I am sure you will remember. 
you also have not seen one on the roadside. They are not there. What happens to them? If it is used and prone, where are they? I went into the garbage bins with the rag pickers there. I also started salvaging, trying to see if there are any plastic spoons there. Only unless they are broken, they were not there. A proper intact spoon was not there. Okay. I went to the landfill sites. I didn't find. So what is actually happening is these are being washed and coming back to us. I went to a restaurant in Sikindrabad. I had ordered for uh, idli sambar. As usual, he's got this white, so-called full grade white spoon. It's a dish with idli in it, sambar in it, uh, running out of time. Uh, and he was putting this in this. I grabbed it from his finger and run my thumb here. It's greasy. You know what it means? It means now I'm in addition to the chemical contamination, I am also exposing myself to bacteriological contamination. So, this is bad as far as plastic is concerned. Okay, so I hope my in in a initiative will help reverse the depleting groundwater and application or, or abuse of plastic. Thank you.